Hi, I'm Dustin with Pro AV School. In today's video, I'm going to show you part of a session from 2020 that I did live talking about serial and analog buffers, as well as strings and make string permanent in simple windows. A quick note, the quality isn't that great, but it's still good content and I think you'll get a lot of value from it. First, we'll talk about the analog buffer. And then we'll talk about why they are kind of similar, very similar, in fact. So this looks a lot like a, um, a digital buffer, except it has a in one, a out one. The enable line is blue and it's filled in. You can't expand that. Now, here's the trick. This buffer has a green input and output signal. So what the green means is that it's undefined. So there's actually, remember there's the three states, the red, green, and blue for analog, or sorry, red, blue, and black for analog digital, I should have written that down, analog, digital, and serial. Well, there's a fourth, and that's kind of not known, unknown. It could be, it could be serial, or it could be analog. And I guess now is probably the time to explain that, actually. So first, before I explain why it could be both, I just want to explain that a green signal cannot actually be compiled. So if these are sitting as green, your program is not going to be able to compile. It needs to know, the compiler needs to know what kind of signal to attach to, even though underlying they're kind of similar, and I'll show you that in a second. It, once you connect that to either an analog or a serial signal, then it will turn the right color and it will turn the other side the right color. You'll see that in our demo. We'll, we'll take a look at that behavior. And the reason that a serial and an analog are very similar, even though they don't seem that way, is this concept that um, a serial signal in simple is a series of ASCII characters. And we also looked at the ASCII table the other day and found that ASCII, the characters in a word or in, in a text string are actually hexadecimal equivalents. And you can also represent that as a decimal. So remember the, that whole 16-bit discussion where it doesn't matter what the scale is or what fits in there, it's still the same underlying number structure. So you could express an analog in hexadecimal as well if you wanted to, for example. It doesn't just have to be decimal. But that's how you can get your characters that are part of a string into um, kind of a representation by analog. So if you have the word, we'll just use the word analog. And you look at it as it's propagating through. So going this way, you're reading the A, then you're reading the N, then you're reading the A, then the L, zero, the O, and G. That's happening on a time-based um, sequence, basically. It's, it's really fast, and you're not going to really see it in the middle of that, that kind of flow, but it happens as, as time passes. So the first thing you're going to look at so the first thing that it's going to see, the symbol that's receiving that signal, is going to see whatever, and I, don't, I didn't look them up because it doesn't really matter. We'll just say it's x. That's the decimal equivalent in the ASCII chart of the A. And the next one, the next one, and the next one, the next one. So other languages use the concept of, the concept and the construct, I guess, of character arrays and they define them as strings. Um, simple doesn't do that. It uses serial signals. And serial signals are 
just this stream. It doesn't have a concept of strings. What gives it the concept of strings is, is that make string permanent. And I guess we already talked about that. So the make string permanent, or MSP, has that permanent string size. And as soon as you define that and run your, your serial into it, it's essentially turning it into a character array or a variable that has the size of that. So it's holding that many chunks of information. And when it's called on essentially to repropagate, it will push that whole thing through. Whereas if you don't make it permanent, then it's just there and gone, like I explained yesterday. And I did explain yesterday now that I now that I remember. So the other way to send, um, or the other buffer that we're going to look at here is the serial buffer. And the interesting thing is it almost is identical to the analog buffer. It has an enable, which is blue. And it has an in and an out that's expandable, well, the whole triangle there. But it's also green, undefined. So that means this could be connected to a serial or an analog. The big difference here, and sorry, I didn't, didn't write it, serial buffer. The main difference is how it works with strings if they are. Um, trying to say this properly. It's how it works with strings if they are defined as make string permanent or if they're just serial signals. So the serial buffer, what color should I use? I think I'll use red. Will only propagate changes. So when that enable line is high, Right, like that. Then at that point, anything that changes here, be it analog or serial, but let's just look at serial, any, any new serial data that comes in will go right through. And when the gate closes or the buffer is not enabled, the gate stops it and it blocks it. Now, if you have a signal that's got MSP, mixing permanent, and that's sitting there waiting to be let through, so that would be an example where you have Say you have a bunch of your source names defined with make string permanent so that you only have to write them in, in the program in one spot. I do that quite a bit. But then you want to selectively send them to a touch panel based on maybe on the room that has different sources available from that list or different, different numbers of sources. Serial buffer won't let you do that because when you open that gate, it's not going to push that make string permanent string through. It's just going to sit there. Once you have a change, then it will go through, but it's not going to pass that make string permanent string through. And that used to uh, really confuse me because it's this is kind of a weird concept. So that's why I thought it was important for you guys to know at this point, because if you want to do stuff like that, before I used to have to do a, or I thought I had to make my own simple plus module that would basically look at things and push them through. But there is another way, and that kind of goes up here, way up to the top, back to this uh, analog buffer. And this analog buffer, actually, um, I need like another color, but I don't have one. This one actually repropagates permanent strings. I'm not sure why they chose the analog buffer to have that functionality and not the serial buffer, but that's the way it is. So in my example before, you could do the exact same thing. You could have um, your device receive data coming here and being blocked until you open that gate or open the enable, and then changes will pass through easily, close it, it stops it. 
But if you run a signal that's been run to a make string permanent so that it becomes a uh, make string permanent signal string, I guess you could say, a permanent string, I guess, would be the right terminology. If you do that, it's, it's sitting here on this input. Like, remember that source name I was talking about? The minute this goes high, the data is actually going to pass. And the data, in this case, is going to be black. The data is actually going to pass through. It's going to push it through, even though it hasn't repropagated. So in most cases, and somebody had this observation this morning, is, well, why don't I just use an analog buffer? And to be honest with you, most of the time, that's what I do, because I don't really need to be restricted by what the serial buffer kind of stops you from doing. And an analog buffer will pass analog spine, and it will also pass serial spine. So that's kind of a, a bit of an interesting phenomenon with how they've got those two symbols set up. So does anybody have any, any questions with that? Because I kind of went through a lot there. Ryan did ask early on when you started about the make string, uh, does the make string permanent symbol save the string that passes into it into memory? And can it be called later, recalled later with the MSP? It, um, it does save it into memory, but only for the current, the current boot. So if the program reboots, then it's gone. It would have to be sent again. So it's not a non-volatile, it would be a volatile memory space. And the way that you recall it is the, just basically the name of that signal, the serial signal that you run into here. Say it's, um, I can't really see it. I'm gonna try to zoom in. Say your signal name is test. And you've created it somewhere else. You have like an M send, or a, sorry, a send. And you put test into this test signal. Oops, can't see that. There we go. Sorry, I'm writing really small here. Um, so you've created that over here. And then all you do is you run this into here. And as soon as that connection is made, then that's turned that into a permanent string. So where, where you would access it in other places or recall it later is just using that string name because it's already a permanent string. So it kind of changes the, the intrinsic behavior of what it is. So hopefully that kind of clarifies that for you. Thanks for watching this video. Please remember to like it and hit subscribe so you can get notifications of new videos when they're posted.